Welcome to today's 3D print. We have another printer. This, thank you Gearbest, is the JG Aurora A5. A very cool looking pic printer in pictures. We'll see if it lives up to the pictures. Stay tuned. If you guys have never seen one of these things packed up, it's a big foam block inside the box. So it looks like it's two pieces. So we're going to tear this bugger open. Alrighty, here is the contents of the box. Everything is in view. This is the gantry. You're looking at the back side here. It's actually very clean. You can sit up here, JG Aurora 3D printer, and this, this the whole entire assembly comes down. That's your gantry. It uses a similar construction to the i3 Mega. It's got these cables that plug into the side here. The bed is built into the base. This is all assembled. All I have to do is, I believe there'll be four screws. Screw this into this and I'm done. I believe that's all there will be to assembly and plug in the cables. Um, it came with a spool holder. It'll hold a 750 gram spool, but I'm not sure if it'll hold a one kilogram spool. I'll have to check that because it is, does look a little short. Okay. It came with this little sample of filament, I think. I think it's filament. A little tiny sample, but it also came with what Creality includes their CR10s, that little 200 gram spool of filament. This is fine. I mean, it's nice to get a kilogram spool, but I'm happy if they include a spool like this because at least that's a generous amount of filament you can actually make some prints with. Uh, standard full size A USB cable, which is good. Spare nozzle, screws, I'm assuming to screw these two parts together. Warranty card, Allen keys, European power core, but that's not the company's fault. That's Gearbest, they sent me the European model, but that's okay. It's a standard C13, of which I have about 500 of them. <laughs> so I got plenty. That's not a big deal. I'm never worried about that. Um, now, this is the interesting part. It came with a 16 gig and looks like a genuine SanDisk Cruiser flash drive. It's not an SD card adapter. I looked. There is actually an SD card slot on this board that's inside here. But it also has a USB port. So you can actually plug a USB drive into this to put your G code on there. That's awesome. Very, very awesome. I really wish more manufacturers would do that. And color touchscreen. Okay. So, we're going to do the plastic porn for people who like that. Here it comes. Oh yeah, big piece for you guys. <laughs> um, there are 3D printed parts, not many. Um, nothing critical, I don't think. And the two critical parts, these um, bearing blocks, the blocks for the verticals, just like the Prusa actually, they look just like the Prusa. That style, um, those are 3D printed, very, very well 3D printed I might add. I don't know what they're made of, but it's a very nice, smooth plastic, and they're very beefy. I don't anticipate a problem with that. I'm, I'm okay with 3D printed parts as long as they're well done, and as long as they're not load-bearing. The whole entire printer is metal, so I'm, I'm okay with that. Here's the really cool part. This feels like the Ultra Base from Anycubic, but this is 305 by 305. So if I can get in the semi-pieces of this, I can put this stuff in my CR10s. That would be cool. So we're going to get into it. This does have a cable chain inside here. There is a hole in the back that shows you the back side of the power supply. It is a 24 volt, 14.6 amp power supply, and it does have a 230, 110 switch in the back. Standard C13 cable power supply. It's all fused. Um, I don't know if it has a um, MOSFET, I think you called it, to um, power heat bed. No idea. Maybe one day I'll open this up and look, but there is a cable chain inside here as well. The wires look like they're all neat. Nothing's going to tangle. It's linear bearing, so it's, it's, it's you know, it, you can hear the bearings rolling. So, uh, just like what's on the um, Wattel duplicator. But it does seem to roll smooth. I don't, I don't feel any binding or anything. Uh, this looks fine. I see no problems. It's got a nice big metal bracket at the top of the um, extruder motor here that has the smooth rail and the threaded rail. They look pretty beefy. I'm impressed by that. You see it's a big, giant aluminum plate in here that the stepper is attached to. So it looks like the load bearing parts are made well. So we shall see. Stand by while I assemble this. All right, tools, spare nozzle, and one of each screw, one for the bottom and one for the spool holder. You get one extra of each. 
basically you'll need four to install the base and three to install the spool holder. Front of the printer, build plate. Don't forget to free up your um, power management and Bowden tube carry system up here. Checking the side here, you got your USB and your USB. This is your USB input. This is for your USB memory stick to print stuff off of. On the back side here, you have your spool holder held on by three screws. It is large enough to hold a 750 gram spool. I'm not sure if it will hold a one kilogram spool. It looks like it should be enough room. I'll verify that later. Um, there's no way to load filament. So I'm guessing there's an automated way through the menu to tell it to draw in filament. Because there's no way for me to actually you know, squeeze a lever and feed in filament. That doesn't exist there. Your Bowden tube comes out here. I'm guessing filament detection is in here since there are two extra wires going into here. So I'm guessing that's your filament detection for your filament run out. Um, this is stuffed inside here. You gotta make sure you pull this out because this is your um, cable management going to the head of the printer. So this takes your um, power and whatnot to your heater cartridge and heating unit and all your equipment plus your Bowden tube. Um, it might be hard to go through the first time because of that being all tangled up. On the back here you have your power switch with your C13 power cord. If you get this printer, underneath here is your access port for you to get to the switch inside of here. You use a wrench to go in there and flip that switch to 110 volt or 220 volt if you're in Europe. Don't get it wrong. If you're in the US, you're safe. If you're in Europe, you are not safe. Alrighty. And then also over here is your three connections, just like the Indicubic I3. The wires are already sitting here. You just plug the three wires in. I believe that is it. This goes to your X stepper. It's all secured, it runs underneath. Be careful when you're installing the gantry that you do not trap this wire. It goes outside the gantry, not in the gantry. That's it. Time to power this bad boy up and see what it does. I don't know what my elapsed time is. 20 minutes. That's taking my time, going things over, going with a flashlight, looking everything over. So fast, easy. Alrighty, you have to actually preheat and turn the printer on to load filament because it's an automated process. You load your spool in the back, you insert your filament into the hole, and then you come into here to set and change. And then here you can heat it. So this button over here changes between extruder and heat bed. So I have it heated up to 50 and I have that heated up to 200. Um, you can press in or out to extrude film. Now you don't want to use this to feed the extruder because. Um, it feeds at a very high rate of speed, I guess, to get going through the Bowden tube and get yourself done. The problem is that's too fast to actually extrude plastic. And I think it knows that because once it started, the motor starts skipping, it's, I guess it realized the filament had hit the extruder, it stopped. So from your main menu, you can hear the printer now. The only fan that I hear going is the fan for the hot end. Um, it's not noisy, but it's not quiet. I'll probably replace that if it's a standard size fan because I think I will probably use this printer a bit. We'll see. But from your main menu, if you're, uh, if you're under the set menu, you're going to see file here. That's just for you to select your file system, whether you're going to be using SD or USB. But if you go to the main menu, you have an option for print. A5 Money Cat. Print file OK. We shall see what happens. Alrighty. The bed has been leveled. It has an assistive leveling process. So you press, you know, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth points, one, two, three, and four, and center, and you go through that once or twice to level it. I would go one, two, three, four, twice, and then do fifth, and tweak as necessary. It appears to be similar to the Ultra Base. It's on the Indicubic i3. I hope it is, because that'd be nice to have for my CR10s. But it has a money cat, and I gave it some filamentive, filament, yeah, filamentive, is it? Yeah, filamentive vertical gray. So we shall see how it comes out. You can hear it's actually pretty quiet. The printer's not nearly as noisy as I thought it would be. Um, we shall see. I will be back after it's done printing the cat.